Good morning. Happy Friday. Good morning. <laughs> this, is, this is my uh, big sister, Diane. She's here for one day. <laughs> one day and a couple of few hours. That's right. So what did, what did you come in to back uh, east for? You're, she's from Oklahoma. <laughs> so I came in to visit my brother and family and wife mm. and sister-in-law, Stacy, and then coming back for my 45th high school class reunion. 45th high school class reunion. Wow. All right. You are old. <laughs> yeah, well, you're catching up. <laughs> yes, that's right. So we're in 1 Samuel chapter 19. 1 Samuel chapter 19. And my big sister is going to read for us from 1 Samuel chapter 19. All right. Saul tries to kill David. 1 Samuel chapter 19. And Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, Saul, my father, seeks to kill you. Therefore, be on your guard in the morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are. And I will speak to my father about you. And if I learn anything, I will tell you. And Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have brought good to you. For he took his life in his hands, and he struck down the Philistine, and the Lord worked a great salvation for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why, then, will your sin against innocent blood by killing David without cause? And Saul listened to the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan reported to him all these things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. And there was a war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them with a great blow so that they fled before him. Then a harmful spirit from the Lord came upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing the lyre, and Saul brought, sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he eluded Saul, so that he struck the spear into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to watch him, that he might kill him in the morning. But Michal, David's wife, told him, if you do not escape with your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michal let David down through the window, and he fled away and escaped. Michal took an image and laid it on the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair at its head and covered it with, with the clothes. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent the messenger to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may kill him. And when the messengers came in, behold, the image was in the bed with the pillow of goat's hair as its head. Saul said to Michal, Why have you deceived me thus, and let my enemy go, so that he has escaped? Michal answered Saul. He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? Now David fled and escaped, and he came to Samuel at Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and lived at Naoth. And it was told it was told Saul, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing at, as head over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. When it was told Saul, he, he sent other messengers. And they also prophesied. And Saul sent messengers again in the third time, and they also prophesied. Then he himself went to Ramah and came to the great wall, well that is in Seku, and he asked, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they are at Naoth in Ramah. And he went there to Naoth in Ramah, and the Spirit of God came upon him also. And he went to, and he went and as he went, he prophesied until he came to Naoth in Ramah. And he too stripped off his clothes, and he too prophesied before Samuel, and lay naked all that day and all that night. Thus it is said, 
is Saul also among the prophets. All right. Uh, thank you, and let's, let's pray. Uh, Father God, uh, we're thankful for your word, the truth of uh, your word, the truth of who you are. We pray, Lord God, that you would um, open our hearts and minds to you to learn from these situations in which David is going through um, and learn in our own lives um, how to put our trust in you in all circumstances. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You closed, it, you closed it up. Sorry. <laughs> so so um, see here we are in you know, chapter 19. Things are continuing to ramp up. And uh, I'm going to notice a, a few things in here, in chapter 19. Uh, one thing, kind of a general overview here, you see Saul's animosity hatred towards towards uh, towards David ramped up and in fact in verse 17 we just kind of jump down to that um, he says Saul said to Michal why have you deceived me thus and let my enemy go he actually uses that word now my enemy so it's now it's not just like he's fearful of him or he's jealous of him he's now just outright calling him his enemy uh, you let my enemy go and escape. Uh, the other big overview you see is that Saul's own children, his son and Michal, his daughter, helped David. So that's another, I think, big, big takeaway from this in general. So if we're going to go back here to these uh, first verses, we see that Saul speaks to his son and to the rest of his servants said, hey, you guys should kill David. I mean, he just comes right out and says that. Uh, and um, Jonathan, who loved David, um, goes and he says, hey, Dad, <laughs> let's have a little conversation on this. But he warns David. He says, you know, go in hiding, and I'll go and talk to my dad. And he talks to him, and it seems to get through to him because... It says that uh, after he has this conversation with his dad, which he tells him, hey, you know, he did a great thing. And uh, verse 5, you notice how he says, he took his life in his hand, he struck down the Philistine singular. That's referring to Goliath, right? So that's the victory over Goliath. And then they get a whole great victory for Israel. Um, and why are you going to do this sinning against innocent blood? And... Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he says, he should not be put to death. Saul's kind of like this uh, Jekyll and Hyde, almost. It seems like, you know, there's times it's like he seems somewhat reasonable, and then he just goes off at, at other times. So here he's just like, as the Lord lives, you know, he's making a vow to the Lord. David's not going to die. Uh, that doesn't last that long, <laughs> though. Though. Um, and so because of that, David's brought back into his presence. And, and uh, David has an interesting life because you think about it. It's like some, if there's war going on, David's out doing battles. If not, he's playing musical instruments in the palace. He's, 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 that kind of a, that would be a, a you know, a, a, a hard transition, you know, to be in battle and then to come back and you're like, I'm supposed to be playing soothing, soothing, music. soothing music after I just got back from like hand-to-hand -hand mm -hmm. combat and stuff. So I, I don't know how you make that transition. Uh, so David was a great warrior, but he's also a great musician and artist and obviously poetry and wrote, wrote a lot of the Psalms. So that's not a combination you usually see, I don't mm -hmm. think. it's it's. So that, that to me is kind of a, a striking thing in, in this. Um, so he's back in his house and war breaks out again. And then, Saul, and then uh, David comes back. He's praying, playing the lyre. The spirit, uh, the evil spirit comes upon Saul again. He takes a spear and tries to pin him against the wall. I, can you imagine that? Like... No, someone throwing a spear at you. No. <laughs> you just avoid that. Avoid and the, that. The, it sticks behind you. Yes, it's, no. it's stuck in the wall, mm -hmm. and you're like, are you kidding me? In there. 
So he fled, of course, right? <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, I'm surprised he sticks around as much as he did, uh, you know, uh, really. Um, so then uh, he's really going after him now. Saul's like, uh, I'm going to post a watch. We're going to take him. And um, now Saul's daughter, Mikael, which is David's wife, comes to his rescue and says, hey, you're going you're, you're to be killed if you stay here. Lowers him down and then deceives her father, right? Deceives right. with the, uh, mannequin, the mannequin in the bed. <laughs> right, so, and um, the messenger, he keeps on calling these people messengers. I don't, I don't know, you know, what the, uh, I'd have to look and do a word study on that, like what the actual word is. I guess that's the best translation of it. But they're really kind of people that are coming to try to arrest him, really. So it's not like, you know, I think our connotation was a messenger. Somebody's coming just to talk to talk you. Talk to you. Right, yeah. give you some message. No, they're coming to arrest you, right? right? So these these messengers are coming to arrest him. And um, she sends them, and of course, she says, oh, he's sick. <laughs> and then the, sec <laughs> then the second time, Saul just says, I don't care if he's sick. Bring him up from his bed so I can kill him. <laughs> and then he finds out that Mikhail has deceived him and said, why have you harbored my enemy? You've let my enemy go. So that's verse 17. Um, and then David fled and escaped, and he goes to Samuel. Samuel is old now, very old. He's in uh, Ramah, and he's under the protection of the prophet now, Samuel. And they send messengers again, Again, these are guys that want to arrest him. They're going to arrest him. And they start prophesying. That's kind of a, you know, kind of when I was, re I was wrestling with that because are they really prophesying according to the Lord and giving us new ins or insight into the Lord? Or I think it means in this case more of like the Lord's power came upon them and prevented them from doing what they wanted to do, which is arrest David. They come into a trance almost. So it looks like they're prophesying. They look like they're speaking in tongues or whatever and uh, doing various things. But they're unable to do what they wanted to do, which was arrest David. Yeah, arrest David. And so finally Saul himself comes and he has this bizarre behavior. When he starts prophesying, he strips off his royal robes. And I think that's kind of is prophetic there because he's losing his kingship. Right. So he's taking that, that's kind of like this visual. He's laying there naked then and, and it's just like laying in the street, he can't move. This is a trance again. Um, and he can't do what he wanted to do, which is kill David in there. Um, so I'm trying to think of like, so what are some things we can take out of this for like our application for our own life? Uh, our own lives. Um, I don't know, you know, kind of as you're looking through this, um, what is something, is there anything that sticks out of you? Like, like, what is a lesson maybe for us? Any lesson that we would take? Putting you on the spot. That is putting me on the spot for sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, one of the things I was kind of thinking of was um, this, we saw it in the last chapter, uh, which Saul's jealousy is ramping up. And as I said yesterday, this jealousy leads people to do irrational things, right? So it's going to lead you to do more and more irrational things. And you see that culmination of that. So one of the things that I take away from this is to guard against this, this spirit of jealousy that can come up upon you. And, and looking at somebody else and saying, man, if you know, I, I just can't stand that they're successful in what they're doing, and then we're looking for a way to tear them down. You might not have at your disposal all the power that a king had, but I've always said to myself, um, I'm glad I don't have that kind of power. Do you think you can handle that? I wouldn't want that kind of power either. <laughs> right, you know, no. to have at your beck and call to say, you know, there's something you don't like, and you, I, hey, you guys, go, Go take care of that, you know. 
Send someone as your messenger to take care of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so I don't. I think um, it's hard to have a position of power and to stay humble. That's another That's thing true. I kind of take away from it. To have humility, to use the power that you have for the right reasons yeah. and the right things. So. Uh, Power, what is it? Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? Is that, that's the saying that go, that's out there. So that's another thing that kind of comes to my mind in, in, in reading this. Um, but there, I mean, he's, he's kind of getting obsessed with wanting to kill him, to take him out. And the other thing I see is that um, his own children, Saul's own children, are against him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And don't agree with their what their father is doing no. in there. Uh, and so there is, I think there's a lesson there for us. In uh, the fourth commandment is honor your father and mother, right? And that's not, that's a commandment as long as your parents are, are not telling you to do something that is against the Lord. We must have, you know, as Peter said, when he's talking to government officials, when they're saying, or the religious leaders, when they're telling them to do something that is against the will of the Lord, he goes, I must obey God rather than men, right? So you always have to obey God um, and r rather than your parents. You are to honor your father and mother. But I remember I was, telling, I was told a story from somebody I knew who, when he was growing up, his father was teaching him how to steal. And his father was uh, using him to break into buildings to squeeze through like, you know, vents, small, and small spaces, because he was smaller and he could mm -hmm. go in and un unlock the door and stuff like that. And that was the kind of education he was, he was getting. Now, later on in his life, he came to know the Lord and he knew that that was wrong. And, and what his father was telling him to do was wrong. So there is, we must obey God rather than men. So even our parents, if our parents are telling you to do something that is wrong, like his, his, his dad's telling him right on verse one, uh, Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should, should kill, kill David. David. And Jonathan's like, no, they're not gonna do that in there. So he, uh, Jonathan is gonna follow God rather than his father in this case. So that's, I guess, another thing that I, I take out of it. Is there anything else that stuck out with you in, in this? I just Sorry. see how it seems like the harmful spirit just keeps on entering and exiting Saul at random times throughout yeah. all these chapters. Yeah. And this time it didn't seem like the liar calmed him down at all. He no. just continued on because he was he had brought David back in. Yeah. And instead he tries to spear him to the wall. <laughs> yeah. So it's like getting worse. It, it seems like it's getting progressively it, worse. Yeah. yeah. And and there is this like it's almost like a switch. switch. Like I said, the Jekyll and Hyde right. thing. It's almost like, wow, this guy really goes off at, at, at times. And so God, you know, it says this harmful spirit from the Lord, and that's kind of a tough thing to what what it was saying in that case is that um, God is allowing this to happen. It's like he Saul had left the Lord. The Lord has allowed this. And so the spirit of the Lord left him. And now this harmful spirit comes. He's allowing that. But God's not the author of evil. Saul is doing what Saul wanted to do. Saul, mm -hmm. Saul is going down that path. So anyway, I think that's what we have for today. Um, and I don't know if you want to pray or if you want, do you, would you like to? No, I'll, I'll let you. You want me to pray? Okay, yeah. right. So, okay, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so let's uh, let's go before the Lord and um, and give Him thanks. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time together. We thank you for my sister being here. Just uh, pray for her and travel for her. But we're thankful for uh, the lessons that we can learn from this. Um, how we can apply this to our life. Um, and really, as I think of Jesus, He was despised and rejected by men. He was abused. And yet he continued to uh, follow you, follow him to, to, your, to do your will, and to even say from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, so help us, Lord God, to have that kind of strength 
uh, to trust in you in all circumstances, even when people are violently against us. Um, so, Father, uh, we can't do that in our own strength. We need you. And so I pray for each and every person that's listening to this, that your blessing would be upon them, that they'd have a wonderful weekend, and know that they're held in your everlasting and loving arms. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great weekend.